What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2021 Series 8 video. Now today, I wanted to do a bit of a metagame discussion video where I talk about probably the worst restricted Pokemon in the format. I know some of you guys are going to say, Marcos, I'm doing well with this Pokemon, it's not bad, and I get that, I get that. Like, you can do well with Pokemon that aren't exactly common. Uh, however, when it comes to, like, the grand scheme of things, I feel that these Pokemon are very underwhelming in, in comparison to the other Restricteds that we have uh, at our disposal. Now, before we get into the video, do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video at any point in time or learned something new, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications, because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content, and answer my comment question of the day. Out of these six Pokemon, and yes, Giratina counts as two, uh, let me know which one you think is the most viable and which one you think is the least viable. But with that, let's get into it. So yeah, Kiram Black is number one on my list. And this isn't in a particular order, but I will say that in my opinion, this one has the most likely chance to succeed. Maybe Lugian, like, it ties with it. But uh, Kiram Black is very physically offensive. It has one of the highest attack stats in the game at 170 and a decent speed tier at 95. On top of that, it's very bulky. But its typing is just kind of eh. And I guess before I get into anything else, I want to say that in Series 8, when you're choosing a restricted Pokemon, it's kind of like the queen on a chessboard. It's going to be able to take a lot of pieces from your opponent. It's very powerful. It's very flexible. You need something that works well because you only get one of these. Maybe in Series 9 when we get two Pokemon, you can get away with a lot more of these sort of underwhelming Pokemon. But for now, when you only have one, it's a bit more difficult. And Kirin Black just doesn't seem like the best option. The main reason is the typing. It's so weak to the various steel types running around in the format. Zacian in particular is a huge issue for this thing. Zacian and Lapras sit on this Pokemon forever, and that's a very common archetype going around. Not only that, this format is notorious for the amount of Intimidators running around. I've seen Hitmontop make a resurgence, like just a little bit, but the fact that Hitmontop is like being used just for the sake of having another option of an Intimidator, on top of things like Landorus and, Lap and uh, Incineroar, uh, make this uh, a very difficult metagame for Kirin Black to succeed, but I feel like you might be able to carve out a small niche as a Life Orb physical attacker with like Dragon Dance, Icicle Spear, Dragon Claw, and either Fly or Fusion Bolt in my opinion. I feel like being able to go for Dragon Dance into Fusion Bolt and ignore a possible Lightning Rod Raichu next to a Kyogre is actually really huge for this thing. On top of that, you do naturally resist uh, the Kyogre's Water Spout because you are Dragon Typing and you have decent Special Bulk, so maybe you could swap this out for like an Assault Vest and run Fly over um, Dragon Dance and just have like four attacks, right? Uh, but that would leave you even more vulnerable to the Intimidate spam. So yeah, Kieran Black not looking too great in my opinion. I could see it maybe working on some particular teams. Now, Necrozma Dawn Wings is one that's very unfortunate. Now, I feel like Necrozma Dawn Wings, like in a non-Dynamax format, it'd be a lot better. However, when so many Pokemon can just Dynamax and eat a hit, or Dynamax and knock it out with a max move, it becomes a lot harder to use effectively with Prison Armor helping it out. It is really nice, but having times four weaknesses to Ghost and Dark, some of the most common and powerful moves in the format, coming out from things like Calyrex Shadow or even a Snarl from Incineroar, disrupt this thing heavily, uh, is super, super annoying. It kind of gets outclassed by its counterpart, Necrozma Duskmane. Even though Necrozma Duskmane is a steel psychic physical attacker, just in the sense of being a weakness policy trick room user, this thing doesn't like out, like it can't compete. It can't compete. Being able to spam things like Max Steel Spike off a of Sunsteel Strike, uh, being able to go for things like Max Quake with uh, Stomping Tantrum or Earthquake, or whatever they're running, um, is really huge for this thing. And Necrozma Dawn Wings just feels super underwhelming in comparison. Uh, it needs some kind of redirection next to it to avoid these moves, but even then, Snarl and Astral Barrage, they don't care about follow me. Like, they will bypass that since they're spread moves. So this thing is very underwhelming. Maybe we'll see some usage later on, but as of right now, if you're running a Trick Room weakness policy uh, restricted Pokemon, it's probably going to be Necrozma Duskman. Next up, we have Lugia. Now, before you guys get, you know, your keyboards ready to type, I, I do know that there are some successful Lugia teams. However, Lugia is a bit of a one-trick pony. I will say that. Lugia is a bit of a one-trick pony. Um, I know some people have had success with it, but uh, being able to only really run weakness policy multi-skill is a huge detriment to it. Yes, having an Aeroblast at your disposal is really cool and really awesome because you have Stab Max Airstream coming off of a stronger move than something like Air Slash or something. 
Uh, but 90 base special attack is kind of... Eh, you know, 110 speed is really good. For, for a restricted format, 110 speed is phenomenal. Um, but, you know, and the bulk is nice and multi-scale is nice and being able to always get off your weakness policy is nice. But this thing does not like Incineroar. It doesn't like getting snarled. It doesn't like anything like that. And on top of that, Lapras just sits on this thing forever. And Laprasation is a very common combo right now. Uh, once your multi-scale is broken, this thing does not want to take a Behemoth Blade. So uh, that is very unfortunate for Lugia. Uh, I will say that I think that maybe it can carve out a niche later on uh, once we have two restricted Pokemon. But as of right now, it really only has Aeroblast, Psychic, Protect, Earth Power, or Aeroblast, Psychic, Protect, Calm Mind. Next up is Mewtwo. And Mewtwo is like, it's, it's kind of weird because it's outclassed by other Psychic types, but it's also not. 130 base speed is kind of slow in comparison to the other Psychic types that are at disposal, but it's also very fast compared to everything else in the metagame and other restricted Pokemon. And it's decently bulky with 106 HP and 90 in both defenses, and 154 special attack shouldn't be overlooked. The fact that it has this much coverage is really big for it, and I could see it maybe seeing usage in double restricted, but as of right now, you don't want to run this thing. Like, it's kind of eh. I could see this thing carving out a slight niche because it is one of the few restricted Pokemon that, like, you know, it's it, one of the few psychic ones that does get access to a very powerful hurricane. It can go for max airstream. Lu like, Mewtwo can go for max airstream, and that's insane. Um, maybe a weakness policy set would work with screens. I have experimented with that, but overall, once again, Mewtwo, not the most viable Pokemon. It doesn't like Incineroar, even if it's running coverage like Focus Blast or something, or Earth Power, or whatever it gets, it doesn't like facing Incineroar, because Incineroar will be able to eat that hit. It will be able to snarl it. And, I don't know, like, the Steel types just still sit on it. Even if you're running fire coverage, Solgaleo can eat a hit, Necrozma can eat a hit. It's just kind of eh. Giratina has to be one of the saddest ones, in my opinion. I love Giratina. And I feel like Giratina, you know, Origin, is going to be a little bit uh, better than Giratina Base. And I'll get into that right now. So Giratina base is kind of disgustingly underwhelming. It has decent special attack at 100 and has incredible bulk with 150, 120, 120. The only thing I could really see this thing doing that other Pokemon don't do better, namely Dragapult. Dragapult outclasses this thing into the ground. Is just running like an assault vest support set. And even then you don't want to waste your restricted on a, re on a support Pokemon like this. Um, like Shadow Force is nice. Dragon Claw is nice. Icy Wind and Thunderbolt's kind of cool. Maybe you could run like Breaking Swipe. But at that point, like, you're just kind of running a very bulky support Pokemon. And I just don't see it being that good in the format. Maybe you could run like a Weakness Policy on this thing. Maybe you can run a Weakness Policy. But at that point, Lugia, Necrozma, like the other Weakness Policy Restricteds that are underwhelming outclass this thing altogether. This thing doesn't like facing Zacian if it's carrying Play Rough. It doesn't even like Crunch Zacian. Um, it doesn't like facing Lapras whatsoever. And despite having decent coverage, despite having a like really good bulk, it just isn't really worth running on your team at the moment. I would love to see someone run this Pokemon, but I just don't see it working out. Next up is Giratina Origin, which might actually be kind of decent. I can see this thing maybe working. Um, Grissius Orb is kind of nice for it because it does get a boost to its Dragon and Ghost type moves. However, it is the only item that Giratina Origin can run because it has to run this to be in Origin form. Dragon types and Ghost type moves uh, having even more power is really nice because Shadow Force is really strong as Max Phantasm. And the fact that you lower the defenses and can even combo into like, you know, Max Airstream once you lower their defense is kind of cool. Like I could see this thing probably being okay. Uh, once again, Incineroar sits on this Pokemon. It's very annoying. But having like, you know, decent speed at 90, that's the same as like the prime, not the primals, but like the weather duo. Having like good bulk all around is really good. But once again, you don't like facing down things like Satian. And maybe you could run some coverage. I believe it does get Earthquake and Earth Power, but it's hard to drop dual stab on this Pokemon to run a coverage other than max Airstream. So yeah, uh, I would say these are the most underwhelming Pokemon in the format as far as Restricteds go. You can make an argument for Lunala, you can make an argument for Zamazenta, but as far as like the bottom of the barrel goes, I feel like these are the Pokemon. Let me know what you guys think. How would you use them on a team if you were to run it? Do you have any successful teams with these Pokemon? If so, do me a favor, please comment the rental code or the paste for these teams in the comment section down below. I know this is a bit of a shorter video. It is Friday. I'm going to rest up a little bit before I stream tonight. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.